I'm Dr Stephanie McKendry, one of the academic development tutors in the school's Learning Development Centre at Glasgow Caledonian University. I've designed this very short vidcast to help new students understand what's expected of them when studying bio at uni. This is an example timetable for second year biomedical science. It may look a bit different to other learning you've done. At school or college, for example, you often have classes all day. But at uni, it can be easy to look at your timetable and make the mistake of thinking that you don't have that much to do. Here, for example, you're not in university until mid-afternoon on Mondays and it looks like you have Wednesday and Friday afternoons off. That is not really the case, though. This is just the time you're in class. There's lots of other things you need to do to pass your course. You'll need to spend as much time again studying for your programme, completing extra reading, going over lecture notes, preparing for labs and tutorials. You'll also have to find the time to work on your assessments, the exams, essays and lab reports you need to complete. And then of course there's the rest of your life, hobbies, part-time work, family commitments and your social life. You can see that your week ends up really full. So you're given class times but the rest is up to you and that's why it's so important you become an independent learner. This is a concept that's very important at university, but there's lots of different phrases for it. Basically though, we mean that students are expected to take responsibility and manage their time. It's up to you to make sure you attend classes, do all of the reading, allocate enough time to prepare your assessments, read widely around the subject, and so on and so on. As you can see from the extracts I've taken from a module handbook, it isn't enough to simply turn up to class. You need to spend a lot of your time working on your own, either in preparing essays or revising for exams, or going over material and doing additional reading. Classes are often just a starting point at uni. Lecturers provide you with the basic outline, then you go away and do much further reading, exploring and discussing the issues in tutorials. You can see in the marking criteria shown here that you wouldn't be marked particularly highly if you relied on your lecture notes alone when writing essays or reports. So what exactly do we expect from our students? An independent learner is someone who takes responsibility. This shouldn't be too hard. It's your degree and you've hopefully chosen this route because it's something you really want to do. Time management is obviously really important as well. Coursework deadlines tend to all occur at the same time, so you need to make sure you're well prepared and know when you're doing what. And so you also need to plan your learning, set yourself targets and work out how you're going to get there. We think it takes a bit of time to become an independent learner. Just as you have to learn all of the subject content, lab techniques and so on, you have to learn academic skills. No one expects you to be able to reference perfectly as soon as you arrive, but you need to make sure you find out how to do it and then practice until you're confident. And we also believe you have to ask questions and take a genuine interest in your subject. We're fairly clear about what we expect of students, but there are also lots of myths and misunderstandings about independent learning. It's worth clarifying some of these issues. Firstly, some people can think that independent learning means learning on your own or in isolation. It doesn't. Learning is a social activity. You learn in groups and with the help of staff, student mentors, librarians, etc. Becoming an independent learner is a journey and you'll often start out being dependent on people. So again, it doesn't mean managing without any help or support. There's lots of support around if you need it. Recognising that you need to find support with something is one of the very skills of independent learning. And you'll develop into an independent learner as you progress. Each year asks more of you, so you're continually developing skills. Why would you be here if you knew it all already? 